What's going on everyone? Juicebags here and welcome back to the channel. Yesterday, Chromatic announced Dungeon Defenders Going Rogue. This game was released with a lot of mixed reactions and mixed emotions from much of the community. Uh, I wanted to go through and give you as best as I can of an unbiased review of the game. Now, obviously, I'm a longtime fan of Dungeon Defenders games, so for me to give a completely unbiased view is a little bit difficult, but I will do my best to get that done. Now, first things first, Dungeon Defenders Going Rogue is a rogue light. Now, yesterday on stream as I was playing the game, I was asked the question, what is a rogue light? What is a rogue like? Um, lots of players in the Dungeon Defenders community have not played these style of games and don't even understand what one is. So let me do my best to sum this up for you. Now, this is far from a perfect description. By all means, clear things up for me down in the comments below. Um, would love to hear you all's definitions. First off, to start off, we have to know what a roguelike is. A roguelike game is a game that features different dungeon or room layouts as you progress through the game with randomized placements of enemies to provide a essentially different experience every time you play the game. Now, in a roguelike game, when you die, it is permadeath. You lose all your progress, you must start over from the beginning, and you get to take nothing at all with you. Now, the objective, of course, in a roguelike game is to see how far you can make it through. So get the furthest you can through the game, and that is really the entire intention of the game. Now, with a roguelike game, it basically follows those, those same rules where the next room you go to is going to be random. Uh, additionally, there's going to be different enemies. There's going to be uh, different rewards available, etc., the difference is in a roguelite game, you're, there is a element of permanent progression. So when you do die, you don't necessarily take anything with you, but you do earn something, whether it be experience, um, some sort of achievement unlock, something along those lines. Your progression through the game will provide you with some form of permanent progression after you die. Now that we got that out of the way, Dungeon Defenders Going Rogue is a rogue light. So it's going to feature a different playthrough every time, uh, slightly different components. You can choose from one of four available heroes. And then when you inevitably die or you complete each individual run, you will come out of it with something. So let's take a look here at the game itself. Now remember this is an early access game. It's not only an early access game, but it's day two of its early access launch. So it's super, super early in the game. Uh, the game is using assets from Dungeon Defenders Awakened. Now there has been lots of tweaks. Uh, there's been quite a few different map reworks and lots of different changes to the visuals itself. And to be honest with you, in my personal opinion, I think Dungeon Defenders Going Rogue looks better on most of the maps than Dungeon Defenders Awaken does. So I personally am really hoping that all of the various lighting and shader changes they made to the game makes it into Dungeon Defenders Awaken in the next update, as I personally just feel like it looks better. Now in Dungeon Defenders Going Rogue, your permanent progression is going to be two different things. First off, you've got one of four heroes to choose from. Now, there will be more heroes coming down the line. Uh, you start off, of course, with the OG4, Squire, Apprentice, Huntress, and Monk. Each individual one of these heroes is going to level independently of each other. So if we take a look at my Huntress here, who is now level 3, uh, this is the basic attacks that are going to be available in every single run. These are the defenses that will be available that will come from a pool. Now, there will also be different modifiers that are going to drop uh, after each wave or after each map that's going to affect each of these defenses differently. Same thing with the gear. There's different weapons available, different recruits um, or different offhands available for you to collect as you play through. These are going to be different every single time when you finish and you leave the match. 
you don't get to keep any of that stuff and take it with you. So you will be starting every run fresh. And then the permanent progression aspect is that character's level. As you see here, I am level 3 now, so I've unlocked Vitality at level 2, and then Strong Arm at level 3. Vitality, of course, increasing my health, and Strong Arm increasing my attack damage. Uh, when I get to level 4, I'm going to unlock Burning Phoenix. Uh, level 5, I'll unlock Elusive. Level 6, I'll unlock Focus Fire and etc. Now, in addition to the hero progression, there is also a account experience level. As you see, my account here is level 23 now. And if we take a look at the talents available, each time you level up, you're going to get points to spend. And you can put these points in one of three categories. Offense, which is everything affecting your hero and hero damage. Defense, which is things affecting just your towers. And then survival, which is, you guessed it, it's survivability. Things like shield, max health, uh, armor, uh, dodge percentage, etc. Now, as you earn more points, of course, you're going to be able to unlock deeper tiers and get some really, although they're small, they do stack up, particularly on top of what you're gaining when you go through the runs. So these points of progression do give you quite a bit of value. Now, as you play through the runs, of course, you're going to start off at, you know, one of the easier maps. Uh, it could be one of many different maps. It's all randomized. And depending on the choices you make throughout, it will decide your experience. The basic cycle of going through a run is do three maps and a boss fight, three maps and a boss fight, and then three maps and a boss fight. The first boss is always going to be Demon Lord. The second boss is always going to be the Goblin Mech. And the third boss is always going to be the Ancient Dragon. So you'll play three randomized maps before you go into each individual boss fights. The boss fights additionally progressively get a little bit more difficult. So the first boss fight is pretty straightforward. The second is a bit of a gear check to see if you made correct choices. And the third is just straight chaos. I personally have still yet to beat the third one. Uh, because things, yeah, it's just not worked out quite yet. It is quite, quite chaotic uh, until you get the hang of it on that ancient dragon fight, though. Now, as you're playing through the game, this is an entirely different experience. This is an action-oriented game. There are towers in it, but this is not a tower defense game. So when you think of dungeon defenders, you think of tower defense. This is not that game. This is completely different. So although this is using assets from Dungeon Defenders Awakened, it is an entirely different play as playing DDA. It's not even remotely the same. Uh, the only thing that's the same, in fact, is the general theme, the mats, uh, the maps, pardon me, and the assets themselves that are used throughout. Everything else as far as how you play the game is going to be widely, widely different. Now, what is my overall opinion of the game? Well, it's super fun, y'all. It really is. It's early access. And by that, I mean it is super early access. So it's an unfinished game. Uh, it's still a little rough around the edges. It needs some polish. And there's still a lot of things that just feel like it could be tweaked or changed throughout its development. However... It is a very fun game, and it is an affordable game. The full retail price on this one normally is going to be $14.99. Right now, it's 15% off. If you own Dungeon Defenders Awakened, you could pick this game up for $7. And in fact, there's a bundle sale right now where if you don't own either game, you can pick up the entire package, Dungeon Defenders Awakened and Dungeon Defenders Going Rogue, for $25. So pretty good deal overall. Now, one of the things I get, I see getting thrown out there over and over again is why did they just not make this a DLC for Dungeon Defenders Awakened? And I think the real question there is why would they have made it a DLC for Dungeon Defenders Awakened? It would only hurt the game. It would only hurt their company if they were to do that. If this was a DLC for Dungeon Defenders Awakened, it would be a paid DLC. 
Right now, if you already own DDA, you can pick this game up for $7. It would cost more than $7 for a DLC like this to be added into DDA. You'd think it would at least be like $9.99 or something like that. It is an entirely different experience, though. Tower defense games do not appeal to everyone. Roguelite games do not appeal to everyone. So if they bundle these together and put them both into one game, first off, if you're a fan of Dungeon Defenders for its tower defense and its loot grind, you just may not like going rogue. However, if you're a fan of roguelite games and not a fan of tower defense, you could absolutely love the game, but not like DDA. So by splitting this up and putting it in there, its own product and its own game, it's costing us, the Dungeon Defenders players, the same amount of money to play the content. However, it's also getting thrown out there to appeal to an entirely different group of players, which, in my opinion, is just a really smart business decision. Uh, I am always super, super critical of Chromatic. Uh, those of you, particularly in my Discord server, know all this. However, in my opinion, this was the smartest thing they could have done. Offer it to Dungeon Defenders current players at a reduced or super low price and get it out there to people who like roguelite games because it really is an entirely different play style. Now, overall, as I mentioned, the game is super fun. It looks pretty. It is rough around the edges. It's day two of early access, and there's no doubt a lot of work that's still going to need to go into the game. But it is a pretty good experience overall. Uh, it's seven bucks if you're already a DDA owner. So in my opinion, I got my seven dollars worth just yesterday alone on the launch day. Uh, I played it for about 10 hours all day long, and I just couldn't turn the game off. Now, I got criticized a little bit on live stream yesterday. This is not sponsored content. Chromatic does not pay me for this. I make these Dungeon Defenders videos because I love the game. Chromatic has never paid me a penny to say anything good about their games, and that's why you get such a fair response. Now, obviously, I'm a fan of the franchise, and... That does affect my opinions quite a bit, as I do have long-time feelings for the Dungeon Defenders world. However, that is my 100% true thoughts. It's a super fun game, it's rough around the edges in early access, and does without question need a lot of work. No matter what you feel about what's going on with Dungeon Defenders 2 or Dungeon Defenders Awakened, I still really honestly believe that it was a smart move having this as its separate product just so it could appeal to that other group of players. And I think this is probably the right direction to go with the game. Now, Dungeon Defenders Awakened isn't going anywhere. Dungeon Defenders 2 isn't going anywhere. Uh, both of them still have updates coming. And this is just a separate product altogether. So let me know what you think of the game down in the description, or down, pardon me, down in the comments below. Uh, I know some people are going to hate it, some people are going to love it, but it's fun, it really is, and I personally have enjoyed it. Now, I'm not going to put 2,000 hours into this game like I've got into Dungeon Defenders Awakened already, without a doubt. But I definitely have had a good time playing it, and I feel like I've already got my money's worth, and I plan to play it more, so it's a win right there for me. So thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time around. Take it easy.